I, I think my brain is wired differently to most people. I don't have a visual imagination. When I shut my eyes, it is just darkness. For a long, long time, my whole life, I've always tried to figure out why I'm slightly different from everyone else, why I never had friends, I never found it easy to make friends, why I can never tell if someone's picking on me or joking, facial expressions, physical cues, all that sort of thing I found very hard. As a child, I used to have massive meltdowns. My mum sent me for therapy at five because I used to lose my rag and just bang my head against walls or scratch my face or tear my hair out. And in the end, my mum got fed up with it, so she decided to take me to a therapist who basically told her to lock me in my bedroom every time I had a meltdown. That absolutely did nothing. That just made it worse and made the rage even worse. At the age of about seven or eight, my mum said to me, do you want a birthday party? To which I said to her, no. <laughs> and she said, why not? I said, because I don't have anyone to invite. I never had any friends growing up. And it didn't bother me because I always found myself really entertaining and I never needed the company of other people to to validate myself, I suppose. Years and years later, I started going out with the boyfriend that I'm currently with now. And we're chatting away and this subject came up and he said to me, you do realize you are autistic, don't you? And I said to him, no, I'm not autistic. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, not autistic, like full on, can't look after yourself autistic, but you are on the spectrum. This is the longest job I've ever had. This is the only place that has put up with me for as long as they have. Every other job I've had has been nine months, eight months, six months. It's been two and a half years. I do a little tour every so often, every time I get a group big enough, I do a little tour of the more important machines. But my favorite bits are when there's nobody around and I can stand around and lose myself in the magic that is my tiny little museum that not many people know about and is just a random little piece of gorgeousness in the middle of tooting. And when you look at it from the outside, it looks like a factory. <laughs> it does not look like it's going to be this beautiful little space up here. And I just love it. People that I work with now, I told them right at the beginning to excuse if I ask any inappropriate questions or if I say anything inappropriate or if I get a bit too much, because if I get overexcited, I get full on overexcited. So they all completely understood. A few of them were like, oh, yeah. Because I, I, I did wait a few weeks before I told them. They were like, you should have told us at the beginning because it makes so much sense. I would classify myself as a high-functioning Asperger's more than actually anything worse than that. So I am high-functioning. I get on with my work perfectly fine. My IQ is slightly higher than average. I can work things out okay. It is just the human-to-human -human contact that I find particularly hard. I find it so hard because women will expect you to notice their new hair or their new makeup or their new clothing or whether they're sad that day or happy that day. I can't tell if someone's having a bad day. I can't tell if they're having a good day. I can't tell if someone's being sarcastic, which always tends to go really wrong because then everyone finds it really funny that I'm like, oh, really? And they're like, no. <laughs> When I first look, started looking into the whole autistic thing, I was a little disheartened by the fact that certain aspects of my personality that I thought were totally me and my quirks actually aren't. They're, they're an autism thing. The things that I find funny, my sense of humor, the things that I find stressful, the things that as time's gone on and the more people I've talked to about it and related to because they are the same level of autistic as I am, the more I quite like that we have a thing and I'm not on my own with a thing, but also I think it is what makes me me. I would like to, if I could stick my head in a bubble and look at another dimension whereby I never was autistic and see how my life would have gone then, I would, but I don't think I'd switch it off now because it makes me who I am. I've learned to like me as a person and to get on with myself and to get used to who I am and how I look and everything else that all that hard work would be for nothing if I could just switch that switch off. So no, I don't think I would switch it off if I could.